Hello, and welcome back to the north of Thailand. Finally, after our motorcycle accident and a quick detour to Bangkok, we're back to continue the journey around northern Thailand, and we're going to have a great trip. Chiang Rai is very famous for its temples, and of course we will be visiting them whilst we're here, but today we're going to start with a very unique place called the Black House, and then an incredible giant white Buddha. So, let's jump on the bike, and let's start off at the Black House. Okay, we've made it to the next temple, although this one is more of a museum than a temple, and it is called Ban Dam Museum, meaning Black House. And as you can see behind me, this huge black structure is what it's named after, but actually it's more than just this one building. It's actually about 40 buildings across the site, and whilst the white temple represents <laughs> the good side of Buddhism and heaven, this building represents the more negative sides of life and hell. I will tell you a little bit more about it, but first of all, let's have a look inside. This is the main building and the largest building on the site. And <laughs> it's an interesting building. You have tables with crocodile skins laid out on them. You have chairs made of horns from animals and all this very, I find very interesting artwork, but which looks very, very dark. And I think a lot of this artwork represents the, the sins and the, the suffering that Buddha saw on his travels. And you do get a feeling for it when you're looking at this artwork. The museum is home to artwork of the famous Thai artist Tanawan Dachani, and each of the 40 buildings is full of sculptures, paintings, artwork, statues, animal skins, animal bones, and all of this is to try and depict Buddhism in a modern sense. And whilst he has received critical acclaim for this artwork, because of the nature of the subject, there's also been a lot of controversy around this artwork. And already you can see some of the reasons why perhaps he gets a little bit of controversy with some of the statues that are in the buildings. Okay, let's go check out some of the other buildings and the other pieces of artwork in the museum. Okay, walking around so far, a few thoughts. It's certainly a very interesting place. I've never seen anywhere like it in Thailand. The buildings, they're built, I mean, when you look at them, they look like a temple. They look like they're part of the normal Buddhist structures. But when you get closer and you see the intricacies on the statues and in the artwork, a lot of phallic images, a lot of suffering and pain, it's really, really not traditional at all. And that's quite an interesting juxtaposition between the perceived 
uh, purity of Buddhism and then what this artist is trying to show by representing Buddhism in a different way. Not all of the buildings are open, so I don't know if that's by design or not, but beneath the buildings, because they're built in traditional style, so a lot of them are on stilts, or raised above the ground, should I say, you have all of these animal bones, and under each one, and sculptures too, but under each one it's like a different theme. And under this one, I think, we have an elephant skeleton, as well as all of these, all of these other animal bones. I laugh because I haven't seen anything like this, really, and I'm still not quite sure how to process it. I've just got to one end of this museum and you have these structures which are very different from the rest in the museum and they almost look like onions growing out of the ground. And when you look inside them, they're amazing. I mean, have you ever seen shells as big as this? It looks like we can go inside this one. Let's see what's inside. Ha! A circle. Wow, listen to that echo. I don't think this audio is going to sound very good. The acoustics are crazy, so I'll just explain outside. You have a circle of chairs made out of horns from the water buffalo, and huge, huge shells below the chairs. Each of these buildings is so fascinating. This strange looking building behind me is actually the artist's home that he stays at when he's on site. Pretty cool building, isn't it? After seeing all of the skulls, especially from the buffalo, a bit worried for these guys. But I should say, all of the skeletons, all of the skins, all come from animals which have died of natural causes. None have been killed specifically for this museum. So if you were worried about that, rest easy. These guys are gonna live a good life. Right, I really enjoyed that. Now we're gonna get back to tradition, jump on a bike and go and see a giant white Buddha. Welcome to Wat Wei Pla Kang. And I've got to say, at a place in Chiang Mai, on the Samung Loop video, I said the White Buddha at Wat Prathat Doi Kam? Maybe that temple. Anyway, there was a big Buddha there, and I said that was the biggest Buddha I had seen. I think this one might just take the prize. Let's get closer and have a look. This is actually more than just a giant Buddha, it is a temple, and there is a, a temple building behind me, as you can see. There is also a nine-story pagoda, but the first thing that caught my eye when I got here was the giant Buddha, so that's what we're going to see first. It is absolutely huge. I can't even get it into shot properly without crouching down. And I'm just thinking my ankle is, has not healed since the bike accident, and how worth is it going up the steps? I presume the view is better from afar, maybe even with the drone, which I might put up in a bit. But do I walk to the top? I presume there's gonna be good views. Ah, let's do it. I'll go slowly, and hopefully the view at the top is worth it, but even from here, what an impressive sight. Seeing this huge, huge white Buddha, and I need my sunglasses. I left my sunglasses in the hotel, but with it being white, my eyes, that's why I'm squinting a bit. Anyway, let's walk to the top, and I'll see you up there.
that giant white Buddha sat on a lotus flower is really, really beautiful. And you can see that as you get closer to it. Yes, it is a giant white shining Buddha, but the gold necklace really pops and stands out. As in most of these places, you have peaceful music playing, but then you have plants and statues around. And hey, my ankle was okay on the stairs, so worth coming up. Okay, for 40 baht, you can actually take a lift to the top of the Buddha or just above its head and get a view out. So I, I've got myself a ticket and that's what we're going to do. So we're going to take the lift. It looks like I'm going to be greeted. What a lovely way to enter a lift. Why can't all lifts be like that? But up we go. Well, the first word is wow. What a greeting. The greeting downstairs was beautiful, but look at this one. The details on the wall are amazing. I think this is the first window, and the window, you can see the circle above the Buddha's eyes. I think this is it, so let's go have a look, see if we can see out. have a view right over the temple complex. Obviously you can see out towards the mountains, but you have the nine-story pagoda and the temple building. Who needs a drone when you can just come up in the lift? I think for 40 baht it's worth coming up and having a look at the view. Not just over the temple complex, but over the mountains around as well. back on ground level and I didn't expect it to have such an amazing lobby but I just expected a view so that was a nice surprise. I would just like to go and have a look at the nine story pagoda. Okay, another very interesting building, this nine-story pagoda. I'm currently on the first floor because it gives a better view of the statues. This one is full of wooden statues, actually, including a fairly large wooden Buddha statue in the middle. I think this temple is quite popular for people to come and make merit, which means make a donation. Uh, there are bags of rice that you can buy at the front to do that and various other things, and there are people here doing that. The interesting part about this one is that in this building, you get the feeling for the mix between Thai Buddhism and Chinese Buddhism. And you can see that in some of the uh, writing and the sculptures. 